Hey, I hope you're doing all right. I'm Paul Wright, and today is part two of my three-part series on lighting, and today we're talking about quality of light. Okay, so what do I mean by quality of light? Duh, I mean the quality of the light. No, see, it's not quite that easy. Think about a room that's lit by fluorescent lights overhead. Maybe it's in a school or in a, you know, maybe the library. And do you ever feel like, you know, if you're eating food in one of those spaces, your food doesn't look quite as appetizing? Or if you're looking at someone, their skin might look a little bit odd. That's a good example of low quality light, as opposed to the best quality light, which is natural sunlight. But if you're old enough to remember when all screw light bulbs were incandescent, you know, those light bulbs that got super hot, they burnt out pretty easily. They would break because they were glass, and they tended to be warmer in color temperature. You know, incandescent lamps kind of were more yellow or amber than they were white. For all you super geeks out there, incandescent tungsten is rated at 3200 Kelvin, as opposed to natural daylight, which is about 5600 Kelvin. But anyways, those old school lamps did a much better job of reproducing color, so your food would look a lot more more appealing, people's skin would look natural, more closer to what it would look like in sunlight. Now I'm all for electrical efficiency and trying to reduce the amount of electricity our world needs, but we definitely took a step backwards when we started doing LED screw bulbs and those curly CFL fluorescent style bulbs. Most of those CFL bulbs actually do a worse job at reproducing color than those overhead like long fluorescent tubes. And especially at the beginning, LEDs were all so terrible. They always looked super blue and just made everything feel really uncomfortable. So if you were putting those bulbs in your home, you really went from a cozy, natural feeling where everything looked right to having these bulbs that maybe were more efficient and lasted a longer time before they burnt out, but they kind of made people's skin look green or your food look unappetizing. So now you might be asking yourself, how am I supposed to know? Am I supposed to just go out and buy all of those old school bulbs? Well, you could if you wanted to, or you could pay attention to a rating system called Color Rendering Index, or CRI for short. CRI compares a specific sheet of specific color swatches, and it compares that to what but it knows that that color is supposed to be and what it looks like under that light and how close it gets to that. So sunlight has a perfect 100 CRI. That's the highest that you can get. If you go out to the hardware store today looking for fluorescent tubes that have a decent CRI rating, you'll probably find that most of them, if they're even listed on the package, show as less than 80. Now don't get me wrong, 80 is better than some other sources, but saying that it's less than 80 is kind of misleading because that's a lot of values that it could possibly be. It's not necessarily actually close to 80. But a lot of consumer bulbs that are available locally actually do get up higher than that. Just a few months ago, I bought some Cree brand LED bulbs, and that was rated at 95. Now that's pretty good, but I did notice when I was actually shooting video and when I installed them in lights here in the studio, it did make things look a little bit odd. And here's where the CRI system really breaks down. Because it's a sheet of swatches, the actual CRI value is an average of all of those swatches and how close they are to being accurate. And that is a big problem because maybe your greens and blues are really accurate and that kind of brings the average up but your reds are really low and that means that your skin tones are not going to look right if you're shooting video under a light that has a very low value in the red swatch you're gonna make people look very sickly and there's not a whole lot of fixing you can do in post to make their skin look right and really you should think about doing this right from the get-go and get that right a lot of professional video lights will list the art value separate from the CRI. So the R value is the red value, and that is what you want to be super accurate for natural looking skin tones, no matter the level of skin tone, if you have someone who has lighter skin like me or darker skin. So this light above me has a high CRI rating. It's in the mid 90s, which is pretty good considering it's LED and it is daylight balance. Apparently it's easier to get a 3200 Kelvin LED bulb that is high CRI. So having this be a 5600 and high CRI is a big deal and it's definitely worth the cost. I'll put a link down below if you wanna buy that. But when we got into the studio, there were fluorescent lights above and we didn't like that. So we decided to install our own 
own lighting fixtures with screw bulbs and then I did several weeks of non-stop research on the very best LED screw bulbs that I could get that had really great CRI. I tried those Cree bulbs from Lowe's and I did not like them. I did more research and what I came across is this high hyper hyper hypercurion. I'm not sure how you say that, but these bulbs I got on Amazon, they're affordable. I bought a pack of six and it didn't break the bank. And they're rated at 92 CRI, which isn't as high as, you know, this professional video light. But when you have high CRI LEDs, they tend to burn out a little bit quicker than lower CRI. So I'm trading off a little bit of CRI for longer lamp life, but also these are more for just general use. So if I have a client here in the office that I'm meeting with, I don't want their skin to look sickly to me when I'm meeting with them. So I highly recommend recommend these bulbs. I mean, you can outfit your house with them, you can outfit your office, and you'll find that because this has a higher CRI value than your average light bulb that you can get, you can actually go around just shooting video, and especially your skin tones in particular are gonna look a lot more natural than your average light bulb. So if you wanna get some of these for yourself, I'll link to Amazon below in the description. They are rated at 4,000 Kelvin, so they're a little bit cooler than your tungsten bulbs, but they're not quite as white as daylight bulbs, so they're really good for just general use. Up until I found out about these high CRI bulbs, my go-to were these GE Reveal HD Plus light bulbs. Now these bulbs aren't nearly as bright as these Hyper Curion bulbs, but they are available a little bit more readily locally to a lot of people. I know that they sell them at Target and I think they also sell them at Lowe's. And for general use, they're pretty good. I've actually lit shoots with these in a little soft box and in a pinch, they worked okay. This is probably the best bulb that you can get locally for shooting video. So let's do a little comparison between the two of these and let's see what you can see. So I turned off the overhead lights and put in this GE bulb and as you can see, the color temperature is much, much warmer. And this is the cooler version of the two versions of this bulb that they sell. So my skin definitely doesn't look natural now, but I have my settings set wrong on my camera, so let me change that. All right, now you can see what it looks like when my camera is balanced properly with a white card. And that white card is just a pop-up thing that I can keep in my pocket when I go on shoots. If you wanna get one of those, they're super handy. I can link that in the description below as well. And this video has so many links. So as you can see, this bulb doesn't look too bad, but I know it does look weird a little bit because I have sunlight coming in through the windows over here. So that's kind of making this uh, look a little bit blue behind me. But just as a reference point, this is what that bulb looks like. So let's try the hypercurion, hyper hair, the other one. All right, and here's that second bulb balance, and you can see, besides it being much brighter, the color is actually better. My skin looks a lot more natural. And for reference, let's go back to my video light up top. And so this is just with that single bulb on the side, but let me turn on the rest of the lights in the office that are this same bulb and see how that fills out the shot. All right, awesome. So now I've got kind of a, a hair light up here and it's lighting up the backdrop a little bit more back behind me. To be honest, this looks pretty great. And to think that you could probably get all of this equipment for less than $100, a cheap soft box and a stand and two of these higher CRI light bulbs, under $100 and you can get a look like this. And that is very impressive. Okay, real quick, let's do one more side-by-side -side comparison. I've got this Aperture Araman light that I talked about yesterday. It's the ALH198. It's high CRI, it's great, it's affordable. You should buy one. To this cheap VidPro by LED light, it's the LED 330X. You can change the color temperature on it. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this isn't actually cheaper than this. This was like literally $100, I think, and this was only 60. So I cannot recommend this, and you'll see why, but you should definitely buy one of these. So one of these, not one of these. One of these, not one of these. And here we go. All right, so I turned off all the other lights here in the studio so you can just see what it looks like being lit just by the Vid Pro light. Uh, I do have a little bit of sunlight coming in over here, so just ignore that. This side of my face probably actually looks a little bit better than this side of my face. But as you can see, it's not terrible, but it's also not great. And I believe this light is rated at about 85. 
So really, it's barely better than your typical fluorescent tube bulb. Real quick, let's switch to the aperture light so we can see the difference. All right, now here's the aperture light over here. Uh, and again, you're seeing sunlight over here, but it's probably matching a little bit better. Uh, although it's darker and I've got no separation, no hair light back here, you can kind of see that the skin looks a little bit more natural. You know, this looks like it should. It's definitely not completely perfect, but when you see it next to the footage from the Vid Pro light, you'll see exactly what I mean. So let's see that Vid Pro light again. And here's the Vid Pro light again, and here's the aperture again. So I hope you're seeing that overall difference in the color. There's slight color temperature differences between all the lights I'm comparing, but even so, I'm using the same way to calibrate each one, that white card, and so it should be consistent each time. All right, let's switch back to my main setup, the diffuse light up top. All right, and we're back, and I hope that you've been able to see the differences, but if you've had trouble distinguishing, just know that YouTube puts an extra compression on all of our videos, and so it might not be as apparent as it would be in person if you were here, and just know that you would definitely be able to pick up on it right away. So that's it for part two of my three-part series on lighting. Part three is coming tomorrow, and you can subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss it. And if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're confused or you want to know more about something covered in this video or just for video production in general, you can leave that in the comment section below. I would love to cover that in the future. If you disliked it, let me know exactly what you disliked and maybe I can fix it, or maybe I'll just totally ignore you. I don't know. And and uh, I think that's it. So I will see you tomorrow.